anytime you're ready. Okay. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, congratulations. We're not going to talk about monkeypox today. I'm kind of sick of it, but maybe next week. And and uh, to all my sister's friends, I really did enjoy her visit. She told me to say that, or I'd get in big trouble. So. Anyway, I want today I'm going to talk about what's going on with COVID and then give you at the end my personal recommendations for how you deal with school because I've had so many parents asking me, what do I do with my kid going to school? First of all, let's look at the numbers. Uh, the trends are looking pretty good. Uh, the cases are really flat. We've talked about this before. Most of the diagnoses are happening at home, so who really knows anyway? If you look at the map, the density map, I love this one. Look at January. The entire country was on fire with Omicron. It started fading. We had a wonderful time in March. Now it looks like it's, the country's got freckles. It's kind of everywhere. So maybe a little bit more uh, in the, you know, my Midwest, but you know, not really uh, all that clear. The good news is if you look at new admissions, new admissions are really dropping. You can see they're coming down in all age groups. Over here, it's the total number, but uh, it's coming down even in 70 year olds, 70 and plus, which is really kind of the high risk group. And if you look at uh, uh, these trends in deaths, deaths tend to be a lagging indicator and it's flat. We're going to talk a little bit more about that because a lot of people uh, have questioned whether or not vaccines are really all that effective. Now, in Texas, Harris County has finally dropped from uh, a hot spot to moderate risk. Our friends in Dimmick County are keeping up. They're also at moderate risk, but it's going to come down. And so I fully anticipate we will probably stop our masking orders, uh, my guess, is next week because things are looking very positively. If you look at the uh, positivity rate, it's down to about 11% uh, in the Texas Medical Center. Our hospitalizations in the Texas Medical Center are also dropping finally. You can see it coming down. This is all good news. And the best news of all of, you know, where now we use uh, wastewater is probably the best indicator for, um, for uh, uh, what's going to happen in the future. And the wastewater is dropping. So you can anticipate pretty clearly that over the next, you know, couple of weeks, things are going to continue to improve. And we're going to see some waning of this. All we, we just got to hope we don't get another, you know, variant that's really, really bad. So I've gotten a lot of questions from colleagues and friends, very smart people, go like, you know, it doesn't seem like the vaccines have been all that effective because they know a lot of people who have gotten vaccinated and yet still got Omicron. So the, this is a classic problem of sort of absolute numbers versus percentages. And I'm going to give you an example of one that you'll all know uh, is very common, Down syndrome, most commonly occurring chromosomal condition, uh, occurs once in every, you know, 700 babies. Uh, they usually have about 6,000 births a year. And we've known for many, many years, really since the 50s, that the greatest percentage of Down syndrome babies are, are born to mothers over the age of 35. So if you were to take 100 families that uh, had a child with Down syndrome, you'd say, well, probably the majority of the mothers are over the age of 35. Well, that's not true. The majority are in their 20s because the vast number of babies are born to you know, mothers in their 20s, not over the age of 35. And so while it's a higher risk in mothers over the age of 35, the vast majority are really uh, to uh, mothers in their 20s. So how does that apply? It's very, very similar to what we're saying with vaccination status. So this is a nice thing that came out in Scientific American, but you can see right now about two thirds of the population has been vaccinated. So. The red squares represent millions of, uh, about 38 million people who are unvaccinated. The light green are uh, those who've been vaccinated and, the, and the, the dark green are vaccinated plus boosted. And in the uh, unvaccinated populations, there's 383 deaths uh, per 100,000. If you look at the uh, people who are vaccinated, it's 143 deaths per 100,000 and in vaccinated plus boosted, even less, 118. But if you're just saying, well, there's, look, there's 338 deaths in the unvaccinated group and 261 in the vaccinated group, well, it doesn't seem like there's that much of a difference. But if you factor in the percentage, how, what percentage, it's really incredibly impressive. So let's go and look at the data as, as expressed as a, as a uh, rate per 100,000. So in the middle of the peak of, of January, Omicron, 
uh, there was a 13-fold benefit to being vaccinated and boosted uh, when you look at hospitalizations. Huge difference between unvaccinated and vaccinated as a percentage. Now, if you walked into the hospital, you know, the numbers were kind of close, but as a percentage of those vaccinated, it was huge. Now, that, narrow, that difference narrowed a bit, so it's only five-fold benefit as you got towards the end of Omicron. And why is that? Well, you remember a long time we talked about herd immunity. As more and more people got infected in that huge spike in January, we approached herd immunity with the combination of uh, being vaccinated or being infected. And so it was harder for the virus to find people who were uninfected. So you got a benefit, a population benefit. So that's why the, the benefit narrowed, but it's still quite impressive. And if you look at deaths, it's even more impressive. 20-fold benefit in January if you were vaccinated and, and with just your primary two vaccines versus uh, unvaccinated, 20-fold benefit. In March, it was eight-fold. And when you begin to look at it as a percentage of the, of the risk population, you can really see this. It's dramatic. Red is the unvaccinated, green is vaccinated, and the dark green is um, uh, vaccinated and boosted. So the difference between the risk for death if you were unvaccinated was, you know, eightfold at, in March. It was 20-fold in January. And the risk is even more impressive when you're over the age of 65, as you can see here. So right now, you know, when you talk about what's the risk-benefit ratio, if you are, are vaccinated and had two booster shots, the, the risk of death is 14-fold higher if you're unvaccinated. And yet, and this is a real problem, only thir one third of the population has been boosted. So even though the da data are compel compelling that vaccination and boosting is much better than, than uh, being unvaccinated, people are sort of not, still not getting vaccinated and those who've been vaccinated are not getting their booster shots. Just look at this difference between vaccination and boosted versus unvaccinated. Anybody who's been vaccinated needs to get their booster shots. And I get a lot of people say, well, I've been vaccinated, I don't need to get a booster. You do need to get a booster. Now, which booster to get? Moderna, last week we talked about it. They're coming out with a bivalent vaccine, you know, to the Omicron and the original variant. Pfizer's doing the same. The data's in, uh, there's a clinical study going on right now. Uh, based on the immunology, it looks like the uh, Omicron-specific uh, variant vaccine is slightly better in terms of the immune response. But the clinical trial hasn't been done, and there are several people who have you know, have said, well, we shouldn't be doing this until we get the data for the clinical trial. But honestly, you know, the odds are it's probably going to be better if you have an Omicron-specific uh, bivalent vaccine. I, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be the first in line to get that. So a lot of parents have asked me, what am I going to do my, about my kid in school? Uh, you know, we are in a moderate community. Should I mask them? What should I do? And I think, you know, it's the, the Omicron has, wave is still here. So it hasn't, we, it hasn't been replaced by another variant. The amount of immunity in the community, as I've shown you with the combination of vaccinations and people getting infected, is really lowering the risk to the point that in kids that are young or in middle school, I actually am not that concerned. Um, yeah, it's possible that, you know, they'll go and get Omicron from their friends, that's, that's always a risk. But it's a, been a milder disease. Uh, the risk is getting less and less. And I think it's time we sort of not focus that much on that, those kids going to school. I think that being unmasked is okay in most communities. Now, if there's an outbreak in a school, that changes everything. But right now, I feel pretty comfortable with sending my kid to school and not worrying about it. Uh, I know that's a big change, you know, people still want to worry about it, but frankly, I think it's time we start just recognizing that until the next variant comes along, we're in pretty good shape. And so I've told most parents, you know, take a chill pill and relax and even take, your, you know, don't worry about if your kid's going to school without a mask on. I, I just don't think it's, at this point, it's uh, that big a deal. I want to end today with some shout outs. First of all, I want to congratulate our 2022 recipients of the DeBakey Award for Excellence in Research. That's research at Baylor is really, really critical to what we do. And each year we celebrate uh, some of the outstanding scientists, particularly based on their last three years of work and publication. And 
Some of these people will not surprise me. The first awardee was uh, Peter Hotez and Dr. Maria Elena Botazzi for their work on the vaccine, but also Joseph Heiser, Catherine King, Irina Larina, uh, Scott Lemaire, and Dr. Uh, Ying Shen, and Dr. Sandeep Kaswani. I want to thank I want to thank all of you for your tremendous work and congratu congratulate you on your Jamaica Awards. So. It's uh, getting close to September, school's back in, in session. I want everybody to have a great weekend. I can't wait to see you next week.